Okay. So everybody's good with this? Just stop me if you have any questions. I said you could do these on your calculator. Yeah. Right? But why should we create a zero You didn't have this. No. Okay, or then don't worry about that. This is probably didn't come out on your on your thing. It was probably on the original homework, and then when I copied it over, I probably just didn't flip that one over. It's where? Or above that? Oh, okay. So don't worry about it. Yeah, last year I told you I pieced together these and made them worksheets because everybody complained about taking their books home. So. I probably missed a few things in there. In the What's your final? Yeah, what's your final? Where? 15, 3a minus 2b, this one. 3a, this is 2b, 3a minus 2b is right here. Did I write it wrong? No, I just didn't see it. 2b. 2b or not 2b? I, I want you to use your calculator. Just get used to putting in a matrix. You like using it? It does make life easier. Otherwise, we would have to add them manually, multiply everything by the scalar numbers, subtract. Subtracting them is a little harder because you really have to pay attention to which order you're going in. But the calculator makes life a lot easier. And not to say, if you don't see this in college, that you may have to do this by hand. Remember, some professors, the, little, the older ones, don't like the calculator. The new ones love anything electronic. Mm -hmm. um, good? Here's it. No, like for 19. Oh, for 19. Yeah. Okay. So remember, they're not the same. They have to be the exact same. How many rows is this? Two rows, three columns. This is two by two. Can't possibly add those together. What did your calculator say? Do you remember? Undefined or? Yeah. What did it say? There was like dimensions. Dimensions, right, dimensions. It'll give you a dimension error for your matrix. This was not possible. Multiplying anything by a scalar, that we can do. Multiplying anything by one number, not a problem. Just to get you kind of used to this. And again, I just wanted you to solve for x, solve this guy for x, put it in your calculator that way, put your matrix, your matrix, your matrices in there, then do the operation. I think that messed up on my. Questions? Anybody not able to do this? The first one is already solved for x. The second one you have to solve for x. Flipping it to a fraction, everybody can do math fraction. Get it back in fraction form. Okay, 33. This you can't multiply. Always look for the inside one. They have to match. So we just say not possible or undefined. Invalid dimensions, whatever you want to say. So if it was like B times A, would you be able to do it? If it was B times A? Okay. Yep, you could do it. Yep. <coughs> How's the multiplying go? Can you check that on your calculator? Which one are you on? Um, 37. 37? 
So that means like x equals zero. What's the answer? This is these are this is your your matrix. You have to get a three by three matrix. Yeah. So every time you do this row times this column, then take a break. This row times this column, then take a break. This yeah. row times this column. That gives you your three columns, and then your rows are here. So you're gonna take this whole piece, just so add that to, together. I don't have to do all that, but the answer like in the bracket. Yep. What is that? That's your resulting matrix. Right. So if you added this up, like for instance, I add this together, you got a, you got a five times one fifth. That's a one. Then you go to this section. You got all zeros in there. That's a zero. Then you go to this section. You got all zeros in there. That's a zero. Yeah, I got it right, but I just don't know what it means. Like, what the answer is. It's just your resulting matrix. Is if I took this and added it together, you get a resulting matrix. Oh. I took this and multiplied it. You get one matrix to, so to beat your like answer. For like X or y or anything? Nope, nope. That's nope. only when. Yeah. That's when we have an equation that says like 3a e minus 2b oh. equals x or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. You get a result. This is your resulting matrix, Lily. This guy in the middle here. This is this says it's good. This is my result. Mm -hmm. I have to have these to match the ones in the middle. What's left is the outside two. That's my resulting matrix. Everybody good with this? You need to know how to multiply these out by hand. Can we do that? Everybody can do that. I'll move that up a little bit. Okay. Follow the pattern when you do this. It's the row times the column. The row times the column. Corresponding elements. First element, first element. Second element, second element. Third element, third element. Anybody need to see this done by hand? I'll gladly do it. Julia, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Noah, you okay? Yeah, I Okay, because the, the minute you, you mix something up, the whole yeah. thing doesn't work. Yeah. That's the only bad part about a matrix. And really, this is the only one, for some reason, that we want to be able to do by hand. Would you put the first part of that? Well, it's just be here to say. If you show me that works, yeah. If you add it in your head. No, yeah, I mean, like, if you mix up the number, like, they mix up one number. But I need to see it, so that's the problem. Yeah. Yes, as long as I see it, yes. But some kids will do that, like multiply it and add it and put one number there. Yeah. Um, I don't see that. So. Um, do you have it back to your back yet? Um, at the end of the period, I'll bring it back, yes. Okay, so also, remember, this is a good way to check to see if it works. These guys down here, there's your row. These guys down here, there's your row. Column, sorry. These guys, there's your column. This across, here's... Here's down here. All of the one fifths. These are all the same. There's your zero. All the same. There's your zero. Zero, zero. So make sure they're all the same. If they're not, and they stand out when you do them, so when they stand out <coughs> when you do this, say, something's off with my pattern. That's why I like I like writing it out. And again, when I was just telling Ashley, I, I always give you partial credit, but if I don't see where you went wrong, like if you do this in your head and you multiply these out and add them together and give me one number, I can't see what you did wrong. I can't give you credit for that. So that's why I'm saying you're only going to be asked to do this once. Just write the whole thing out. It helps you to see, yes, it works, and it helps me to see where you went wrong. And one little thing, I get it, one little thing, not multiplying by zero, putting the one eight there instead of the zero, makes a big difference. But if I don't see what you did, I can't give you credit. But you know I always give partial credit. <laughs> That's why I'm totally against multiple choice in math. Um, again, this looks like it wouldn't work, but your inside ones are the same, and your resulting matrix is a 2 by 4, which probably wouldn't have thought of that, that it would be a 2 by 4. It's a little one and a long one, <coughs> excuse me, and it results in a 2 by 4.
Okay. So any questions on this? No, ma'am. I like that. No, ma'am. We're all good to go. I hold true. Then these hold true. <laughs> Um, it doesn't matter, they're just a matrix they, 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 Oh, the little C, let little C be a, a, a scalar. This one is a little C. These are both little C. You're right. Where is it? These are little C's. Scalar. This one's a big C. This one's a little C. Why? The first one's big. Why is it so What does it matter? Because in multiplication, um, your matrix, you, you have a pattern with your matrix, you have to check them. If you're multiplying by a scalar number, you don't have to check anything. So, if, like this said, I'm going to multiply 3 times matrix A plus matrix B. Technically, I should look like this. I'll be this. Can I do this? Absolutely. Or can I take this, add it together, and then multiply it by three? Anything with this, <coughs> excuse me, anything with the scalar should automatically work. Not necessarily a matrix because you'll change the, dim the dimension on it. But these guys, they work as scalar. Good call on that, Lily. Okay, associative property with scalar. <coughs> Same thing. Just rearrange this because it's scalar. Does it matter who I multiply the three by first? What's the key thing about the scalar? So if I did this, <laughs> that's a three. The big letters are the, the matrix. So if I if I multiplied my matrix first and then I multiplied the answer by three. Is it the same as if I multiply A by 3 and then multiply by, by matrix B? Same thing. Don't get hung up on these because as soon as you put them in your calc, you'll see them. You're going to use your calc for these anyway. Every year I say I'm not going to even do this because it's not something I need you to memorize. But I just need you to kind of be aware that some of these have properties. In case you didn't notice, there's no division property in a matrix. It's because of the zero. You can't divide by zero, so in your matrix, if you have a zero, it's not going to work, so there's no division. All right. Here's your coefficient, and we don't use this very often. Here's your coefficient matrix. Here's your constant. Here's your variable matrix. We solve this as a systems of equations. So if I took my answer, this is where all your answers are. What is x1? What is x2? What is x3? x1, x2, x3 instead of x, y, and z. Just subscriptive. If I took that and I multiplied it by a, I will get my result b. Your equation was this. 1x minus 2y plus 1z equals negative 4. This is where this is coming from. Remember how we separated? I said you'll very rarely separate them. Okay, so this is a case where you could separate them. Do we really use this? Not too much, but, but the, so that you know that it's there. So if we actually took this and we got all your answers and we multiplied those together, it would result in this column. So A times your answers will equal your constant B. Not something we use too often, but just another property that exists here. And this is T. Um, we very rarely separate them out to do any of this, but, but we could. You still would have to do uh, an augmented one with the whole thing to find your answer. Still going to do your RREF anyway to find your answer, and you're going to take your answers out. Let me see if I put one here. Do I, do I have one on yours? Okay, so let's try this. Let's put, let's take this guy and find out the answer to this. So we could put this in your matrix, in your, in your matrix A, 
you guys do it because you have people left faster than mine. Put this whole thing in your matrix A. Make it a 3 by 4. And let's find the x value. Let's just prove that this works. It's the same as x, y, and z. They just subscripted their x value. So anybody come up with an X1, Y1, an X1, X2, X3, negative 1, 2, 1, okay? So now, if I took this, if I took this and I put this in a matrix, and I put this in a matrix, put this in, in another one, put this in one, multiply them together, and it should come out to this. So I have a 3 by 3. And I have 3 by 1. Don't I, I'm, I'm able to multiply those. Don't I end up with a 3 by 1? I should end up with a 3 by 1. That comes out to be this. Okay. Where you put the negative yeah. By solving this. By putting that whole thing into your augmented matrix. By putting that in a 3 by 4 matrix and just solving the answers. That's not your whole thing. The RRES thing. RRES. How? I just put this in as one matrix. Put this in as one matrix. Okay, so that's why we, we very rarely separate them, because it's like double the work. You're still going to put this in just to find me the answer. You see what I'm saying? We very rarely do this. Well, now, well, hang on. You got the answer. You got this whole as one matrix, a three by four? Yes, do this as one matrix so that we can find the answer to this. So Anne Marie found us the answer. So it came out to be this. So now, if I make another matrix with just the 3 by 3, and I make this matrix with the 3 by 1, and I multiply them together, I will get this answer. Okay. So how do you put this all together so we can find out the answer? What, what is this system? What is the x, y, and z values for this guy? this whole system. This was put together before. Now we did it separately. We did it as a coefficient and a constant, which I said in the beginning, we hardly ever do this. Usually we keep it as an augmented. We do the whole thing together. So this said 1x minus 2y plus 1 equals negative 4. And it said no x, y plus 2z equals 4. It had a whole system of equations. We put this in your matrix. We got an answer, right? So now, if we take this, just the coefficients only, and we take this, just the answers, and we multiply these together, we come out with this guy as a result. It's just another way to look at it. Do we still have to go find your answers, yes, which is why we never do this. But it's a property of this. Okay, don't get too hung up on it. If it doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. Okay. There was another one, but we're not gonna we're not gonna bother. All right. Decide whether we can use these properties or not. So let's just hit a couple of these. This is how you do this. What is the dimension of B? Two by three. If I multiply anything by a scalar, does it bother the dimensions? Mm -hmm. No. So what is the dimensions of C? Three by, three. three by two. Can I subtract these two? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Why else? They don't have the same dimensions. Can't do this. We say undefined. That's multiplying. Adding and subtracting have to be exactly the same. 
okay? And multiplying, here's a multiply. What's the dimension of B? What's the dimension of C? So can I multiply these guys? Yes, and what's my resulting? Two by two. Okay, let's, well you could do three, well let's do three. Three says I have to multiply C, which is a three by two, by B, which is a two by three. Can I do that? Yeah. And what do I result with? What is D? Now, can I do this? No. So you get it, right? Okay. Now, there's only one other thing I have to go back and show you. This one you're not going to write. And remind me, I have to hand out um, two things too. Society? Oh, give me half. I'll, I'll hand that half. Mm -hmm. I don't hand it out. Okay. There's one other thing I need to show you. Okay. Sometimes, I need you to write this down. This is what happens with an infinite solution. Okay. You put in your matrix. You do an RREF. It's going to happen on your homework. And you result in this. I'm going to put in my RREF and it's going to result in this. I'm just, I put something in, doesn't matter what it was, but it came back and it looked like this. Now, normally, this should be my X, Y, and Z, right? So normally I would have this row over here be ones, and everybody would have zeros in here, right? In your RREF, this should have been a zero, but it's not. This should have been a zero, but it's not. This has all zeros. This should have been a one, but it's not. So when this happens to you down here, this is this means all zeros down there means infinite solution. And how do I solve this? I start like this. Z is missing. So I say, let Z equal to A. And I call this any integer. Um, any integer. Now, when Z is A, I'm going to work myself backwards. I'm going to back substitute now. Notice I have Z's in here and Z's in here, which I shouldn't, right? unless I wanted to back substitute when we used to do that when we used to do that in the very beginning. So now I'm going to back substitute. I started with this. And this is how you're going to know this is infinite. So I have no z. So let z equal a. When I get to this equation, it's no x, 1y minus 1z equals 0. So what is z? And, and I made it the a, right? So I'm going to take out the Z and substitute it with an A. So Y is going to equal A. I'm just solving for Y now. Shouldn't I have found Y in this one? Shouldn't I have been able to say this was a zero or Y is equal to this guy, right? But I couldn't. 
because it didn't fit my pattern. Something went wrong. So I start here, I make E equal A, and then I back step to T. All your issues are going to be in terms of A. So now, I back step to T further. I go back to the first guy. And I say 1X, <coughs> God bless you, plus 0Y plus 3Z equals 1. I don't have a Y, but what is my Z? A. So in place of this guy, I'm going to put an A. X plus 3A equals 1. i got to solve for X in terms of A. So I'm just going to subtract my 3A. So now, X is equal to 1 minus 3A, Y is equal to A, and Z is equal to A, meaning any integer. So if I plug the 1 in here, then Y would be 1, Z would be 1, 1, X would be negative 2. If I plug the negative 1 in here, this would be negative 1, negative 1, this guy would be a 4. So this is going to work for any solution. And so you're solving... And um, you're solving in terms of A. So it's like the bottom row Yeah. When this becomes all zero, this is infinite. It also doesn't fit your pattern. Because your pattern usually goes like this. Some number. Some number. Zero, one, zero. Some number. Zero, zero, one. Some number. It's not going to fit that pattern. Okay, so you guys have the homework to do, right?